physical properties are properties that can be measured and there are largely speaking four physical properties that we deal with. The first two are melting point which is the temperature at which the solid and liquid phases of a substance are in equilibrium and boiling point which is the temperature at which the vapor pressure of a substance equals the atmospheric pressure and we know that in a solid the particles are densely packed and fairly neatly arranged in a liquid they are still fairly densely packed but the arrangement is random and in a gas the particles have large distances between them and there is absolutely no arrangement and in order to separate or to convert from a solid to a liquid or a liquid to a gas it's necessary to break the intermolecular forces that exist between those molecules so what we find is that substances that have stronger intermolecular forces will have higher melting and boiling points. The third physical property is called vapor pressure and that is the pressure exerted by a vapor at equilibrium with its liquid in a closed system. And what we find here is that there are always a certain number of particles that are able to escape from a liquid and become a gas and in a closed system that gas exerts a force on the container. Now a substance that has strong intermolecular forces would not easily allow particles to escape unlike a substance with weak intermolecular forces where the particles are able to easily escape that liquid and become a gas. So what we find is that substances with weak intermolecular forces have more gas particles and as a result a higher vapor pressure and so we can summarize as this strong intermolecular forces result in a low vapor pressure. The fourth and less common physical property is viscosity which is the resistance of a liquid to flow where a substance like honey would have a very high viscosity because it is very resistant to flow and a substance like water would have a very low viscosity because it flows very easily and that flow is essentially a measure of how strong the intermolecular forces are between particles. If the particles are held together by strong intermolecular forces, the substance does not easily flow. And as a result, we say that strong intermolecular forces result in a high viscosity. Hydrocarbons are always considered to be nonpolar molecules because they contain only carbon-carbon single bonds which have an electronegativity difference of zero and carbon-hydrogen single bonds which have an electronegativity difference of 0.4. Both of those are considered to be nonpolar bonds and as a result hydrocarbons are always nonpolar molecules and as a result the only intermolecular forces that exist between hydrocarbons are the London dispersion forces. So there are two ways in which we can compare molecular co polarity and intermolecular forces in organic molecules. The first is for molecules that have the same chain length, the only difference would then be the functional group. And so we would compare the polarity of different functional groups. And here I have laid out in a table in order of increasing polarity. So as we have said, hydrocarbons are nonpolar molecules. The halogens, iodine and bromine, are also nonpolar because they have such a small electronegativity difference, those being 0 and 0 0.3 respectively, that we say that any molecule containing one of these groups is also nonpolar, and as a result, the intermolecular forces are London forces. The chlorine functional group is said to be weakly polar because it has an electronegativity difference of 0 0.5. As a result of this weak polarity, we say that the intermolecular forces that exist between molecules that contain this group are weak dipole-dipole forces. The next functional group that we look at is the carbonyl group that makes our ketones and that because of the carbon-oxygen bond which has an electronegativity difference of 1, we say that that is a polar molecule and as a result there are dipole-dipole forces Next comes the ester group, which is also polar and dipole-dipole forces, followed by the formal group of aldehydes, which is also polar, which gives rise to dipole-dipole forces. It's important to note here that 
These are arranged in order of increasing polarity, but they are all very, very similar in their polarity. The next big increase is that of a fluoro group because it has an electronegativity difference of 1.5. And as a result, we say that is a polar bond, which makes it a polar molecule, which makes those dipole-dipole intermolecular forces that are stronger than those containing the carbon-oxygen double bond. Uh, second to last, we have the hydroxyl group of alcohols, that is an oxygen bonded to a hydrogen, which is a very polar group, and as a result, we have not only dipole-dipole forces, but hydrogen bonding intermolecular forces. And so, as a result, those are very strong. And finally, we have the carboxyl group of our carboxylic acids, which is our carbonyl group and the hydroxyl group, which makes this even more polar than the hydroxyl group on its own which makes these hydrogen bonding forces the strongest. So as we can see in this table, we have arranged these functional groups in order of increasing intermolecular force strength. And so we can say that substances with functional groups lower down on this table have stronger intermolecular forces and as a result, their physical properties would be affected. Hydrocarbons are always nonpolar organic molecules because of the nonpolar carbon carbon and carbon hydrogen single bonds. And as a result, the only intermolecular forces that exist between hydrocarbons are the London forces. So, in a situation where two or more molecules have the same functional group, in this case being hydrocarbons, then all that needs to be compared is what is called the contact surface area, where contact surface area refers essentially to the size of the molecule, but more specifically to the amount of places on the molecule where intermolecular forces can exist. And there are three properties that are said to influence the contact surface area. The first is the length of the chain or the chain length, also sometimes referred to as the molecular mass, where here we can see we have two examples. The first example is a smaller molecule that only has one, two, three, four, five, six sites where intermolecular forces could exist, where those temporary dipoles of London forces could be induced. This is in contrast to a bigger molecule that has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve sites for potential London forces to exist. And as a result, we say that this chain length being longer gives it a greater contact surface area and therefore we say that this molecule would have stronger intermolecular forces than this one. It's important to note that we are not saying that these are different intermolecular forces. Both of these molecules only have London dispersion forces between them, but this one would have more opportunities for London forces to exist and as a result those forces would be stronger. The second property is called branching, where if we compare three molecules that have the same molecular mass, these being isomers of each other, we can see that each one of these molecules get it, gets a single carbon shorter as we add a branch. And what we say branching does is it decreases the contact surface area because there are molecules and atoms that are too close together to allow for sites for intermolecular forces to exist. And as a result of that, we say that as the amount of branching increases, this contact surface area decreases. That decreasing contact surface area therefore allows for fewer London forces to exist and results in weaker intermolecular forces. So we would say the molecule with the least branching, the longest straight chain, is going to have the strongest intermolecular forces. Once again, those still only being London forces. The third possible change is the bond order and bond order refers to multiple bonds those being double or triple bonds so what we can see here we have three carbon chains uh, each of them with three carbons in them but the first carbon chain does not have a single double bond in it the second carbon chain has one double bond and the third carbon chain has two double bonds and what we say is that these multiple bonds double or triple bonds increase the rigidity, they make this molecule more rigid and less flexible, which as a result causes fewer sites or fewer interactions between molecules, basically decreasing the number of possible 
sites for London forces to exist. So we say it decreases the contact surface area once again. And so we say that as the bond order increases, as the number of multiple bonds increases, the intermolecular forces get weaker because the molecules become more rigid. There is a standard approach that is required to compare the physical properties of different organic molecules. And that approach is four steps that need to be gone through. The first one is to identify the differences between the molecules, whether those are functional groups or contact surface area differences. The second step is to compare the intermolecular forces that exist between each molecule. The third is to relate those intermolecular force differences to energy and finally then compare using that energy relation that to a physical property. There are largely two categories in which these questions happen. The first is where you are given two molecules, two or more molecules that have the same chain length but different functional groups. We've got an example here of an aldehyde that has a formal group on it and an alcohol that has a hydroxyl group on it and we can see how we go through this approach. The first step is to identify the differences, that is to say that the aldehyde has a polar carbonyl group on it where the alcohol has a very polar hydroxyl group. The second step is to compare those intermolecular forces. So we would say that the polar aldehyde has dipole-dipole intermolecular forces which are weaker than the hydrogen bonding intermolecular forces that exist on the alcohol. The third step is to relate that intermolecular force difference to energy and that is done in the following way. It is done by saying the stronger hydrogen bonding forces require more energy to separate. And then your final step would be to say, therefore since more energy is required, the alcohol would have a higher melting point or boiling point or viscosity or a lower vapour pressure than the aldehyde. The second type of question that can come across is one where you have two or more molecules that have the same functional groups but they have different chain lengths and here I've got an example of a carbon compound that contains or a hydrocarbon with two carbons and a hydrocarbon with five carbons in its chain and the first step here is to once again identify the differences and we would state here that they are both alkanes or both hydrocarbons but one of them is a two carbon chain where the other is a five carbon chain. The second step there is to compare the intermolecular forces and we would start by stating that since they are both hydrocarbons that they both have London forces acting between them. However, since the five carbon chain has a greater contact surface area than the two carbon chain, therefore the five carbon chain would have stronger intermolecular forces that exist between it than the two carbon chain. Note once again that we are saying that it has more London forces. We are not saying that it doesn't or it has different intermolecular forces. We are just saying that there are more of them and as a result stronger intermolecular forces. The third step then once again to relate that to energy. So to say since the five carbon chain has a greater contact surface area and therefore stronger intermolecular forces, it would require more energy to separate the five carbon molecules than the two carbon molecules and then finally the fourth step remains exactly the same where we would state that since more energy is required to separate the five carbon chain than the two carbon chain it will have the higher melting point boiling point or viscosity and the lower vapor pressure.